The Kurds are considered the largest people without their own state. Yet the Kurds do not exist at all. Or do they? In any case, the people do not represent a clear unit, neither linguistically, nor ethnically, nor religiously, or politically. But despite all the differences, there is still an unmanageable feeling of togetherness. Who are the Kurds? Where did they come from? The Kurds. When you hear the name, it sounds like a folk with a language, a culture and a state. Like if I said the Germans or the Swiss. But the more you deal with these people, the more you realize that this folk is not comparable with other peoples. The diversity of the Kurds is obvious. The people, however, always causes confusion because they are simply unknown despite their unique history reaching far into the past. Even the origin of the Kurds is unclear. There are a lot of theses and speculations where the Kurds could come from. One well-known assumption is that Indo-Germanic peoples from India and Iran spread and settled in the west of Iran in the first millennium before Christ, where Sumerians, Assyrians and Medes, among others, lived. Another idea about the Kurds is that they may have descended from the Scythians, a people from northern Iran. What is certain is that the Kurds are already mentioned in the writings of the Sumerians, that is, about 2,300 years before Christ. Thus, they belong to the oldest people of the world, with the difference that their exact origin is not known. As an important ethnic group, they are mainly distributed over the four countries of today, Iraq, Iran, Syria and Turkey. Smaller groups are at home in Armenia, Azerbaijan and Lebanon, among others. The settlement area of the Kurds is called Kurdistan, which in Persian means as much as land of the Kurds. But Kurdistan as a whole cannot be defined exactly, because not only Kurds live there, but also other peoples like the Turkmen, Arabs, Persians or Turks. Another reason why Kurdistan cannot be defined geographically is that the states to whose territories the Kurdish areas belong try with all means not to let this demarcation and this term arise, be it with prohibitions or also with force. However, even if they try to deny the existence of Kurdistan, a region with this name has existed for over a thousand years. Today it is assumed that there are about 30 to 50 million Kurds scattered around the world, like in a diaspora, and the number is increasing, as the abundance of children is a great tradition among the Kurds. The exact size of the population is also not known, because in the states where most Kurds live, no data on their ethnicity is collected, because one would have to reckon with large numbers, which would perhaps cause fear and insecurity in the states. Well, the distribution as we know it today, that is the distribution to the countries of Iraq, Iran, Syria and Turkey, goes back to the time after the First World War, because there the Ottoman Empire was disempowered and divided between the victorious powers. That was when the Treaty of Sèvres was concluded. This treaty was concluded by the victorious powers of the First World War and the Ottoman Empire in order to formally end the war. This was a dictatorial peace, because the victors laid down the conditions, while the losers had to take the rap with no possibility of co-determination. In essence, it was a matter of dividing the Ottoman Empire after its defeat. Thus, areas such as Syria and Lebanon belonged to France, Great Britain received Palestine and Iraq, and Russia also received strategically important areas such as Istanbul. 
As a result, there was a great chance for the Kurds to become independent, because according to Article 62 of the Treaty of Sèvres, Kurdistan should get autonomy, and Article 64 even held out the prospect of possible independence. To achieve this, the Kurds had to prove to the League of Nations within one year of the treaty coming into force that the majority of the Kurds wanted independence from Turkey. The League of Nations would also decide whether the Kurdish population was ready for independence. In the event of independence, the Allies agreed to tolerate the voluntary annexation of the Kurdish parts of the former Wilayat Mosul to the Kurdish state. But the former Ottoman Empire also included Armenians, which claims to Anatolian soil overlapped with those of the Kurds on several occasions. While Armenia sat on the negotiation table on an equal footing with small European states such as Belgium, for example, the Kurdish delegation was not even granted a seat at the table. So it's not surprising that the Kurds did not have powerful advocates like the Armenians and were thus content with only one third of the autonomous territory. However, the treaty never came into force. On the Turkish side, an important figure then appeared, namely Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. He aspired to an independent Turkey and was aware, even before the First World War, that the Ottoman Empire stood in the way of an independent Turkey. On his way to a united Turkey, he relied on the help of the Kurds by promising them independence as soon as his nation-state was established. Of course, the Kurds were strongly involved because of the hope for an independent Kurdistan. At last, their dream would come true. But again, they were disappointed because after Turkey was established in 1923, there were no more Kurds for Atatürk, so they were renamed as Mountain Turks. Also, the Allies were forced to accept the newly created Turkey. After the victory of the Turks, a new treaty was signed in the same year, from which the borders of Turkey and Greece emerged. The treaty of the same name took place in Lausanne, in Switzerland, in the absence of the Kurds. Neither the Kurds nor Kurdistan were mentioned in the treaty, because Turkey decided that there were no Kurds in this territory. For Atatürk, they were at most mountain Turks who had forgotten their language of origin. However, during the conference, London announced that the government of Britain and Iraq recognized the rights of the Kurds living in Iraq and allowed them to establish a government in this area of today's Iraq, which is a big step forward for the Kurds and their independence. But in Turkey, the atrocities continued. The language, culture and identity of the Kurds were promptly banned but not enough of oppression, because they were also forcibly assimilated. So, Kurds who lived in the village were deported and replaced by Turks. Kurdish village and town names were changed to Turkish. Also, Kurdish names were not allowed to be given to the children. The absurd thing is yet to come. The government even banned letters that occur in Kurdish but not in Turkish, such as the letters X, W and Q. It's very new that Kurdish may be taught in schools, only as an optional subject, but nevertheless, it's an extraordinary step for the government of Turkey, because according to the constitution, also this was forbidden, which is why many Kurds in Turkey do not speak their mother tongue, either because of fear or also to be spared from the disadvantages. In 1923, when Atatürk's term as president began, Sheikh Mahmoud Barzinzi declared, after many Kurdish uprisings, a Kurdish kingdom in Sleimania in northern Iraq. But the joy did not last longer than a year, because Great Britain did not agree and reconquered Sleimania. Sheikh Mahmoud Barzinzi was sent into exile in India, post Bobrat, where he died a few years later. In Turkey, too, there was resistance against the government in Ankara because the Kurds felt betrayed by Atatürk. Under the leadership of Sheikh Said, an uprising broke out in February 1925, which was carried out by Kurds. Several thousand people took up arms, but after a short time, the uprising was crushed by the Turkish army. 
As a result, a process known today as nation building began. This was accompanied by a drastic assimilation policy because Ataturk repeatedly emphasized the high rank of the Turks and the good fortune of being able to say that one is a Turk. It is clear that all other ethnic groups felt oppressed because they too lived there or were also secondary, especially the Kurds. But 19 years later, another Kurdish leader who is popular with all Kurds and whose family is still present in politics came into the public eye. His son, Masoud Barzani, was also Kurdish president until he retired from office in 2017 and left the government to his nephew. We're talking about Mustafa Barzani, who controlled Erbil and Badinan at that time. He also helped Qazi Muhammad to dominate Kurdish areas in Iran, which is where Qazi Muhammad succeeded in proclaiming the Kurdish Republic of Mahabad in January 1946 and presenting himself as president of this republic. But even this hope of the Kurds was crushed. Qazi Muhammad was publicly executed a month later. Also in Syria, there were many clashes with the Kurds and during this time. In 1957, 250 Kurdish children were attacked and killed by Arab nationalists in a cinema. And one year later, all Kurdish language publications were banned by the Assad government. In March 1970, a peace treaty was signed between the Iraqi government and the Kurds. And the Kurds were given an autonomous region, but this only lasted for four years because the new president of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, signed a treaty with the Shah of Iran in which he renounced the river Shat al-Arab if the Shah ended its support to the Kurds for independence. There are still conflicts today over the river because Iraq wants it back but Iran refuses to give it up. In the meantime, two Kurdish parties had emerged in Iraq. Mustafa Barzani's party, called KDP, Kurdish Democratic Party, and Jalal Talabani's party, called PUK. Patriotic Union of Kurdistan. Since they could not agree either, a conflict arose between them in 1978, which resulted in many deaths. In the same year, the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party, was founded in Turkey by Abdullah Öcalan. At the end of the 1970s, the Kurds in Kurdish areas of Iraq were replaced by Arabs. They went to the cities of Hawler, Slimania, Dohok and Kirkuk, which today belong to the Kurds. In the course of the first Gulf War, which again involved the river Shat al-Arab, the KDP held the Iranians active, in contrast to the PUK. The war from 1980 to 1988 killed about a million people. In the 80s, after the war, the Kurds were forcibly removed from the Iraqi border, where the majority of them lived because they were suspected of helping the Iranians during the Iraq-Iran war. As a result, many Kurds from Iraq fled to Iran, otherwise they would have been brutally murdered by Saddam Hussein. It was precisely after this prolonged war that Saddam Hussein launched the Anfal operation, in which he used chemical weapons. He had ordered poison gas against the Kurdish civilian population, because he was outraged that the two largest Kurdish parties had sided with Iran in the first Gulf War. That is why he wanted to wipe out all Kurds from northern Iraq and then Arabize the areas. During the operation, he massacred mainly Kurdish men who were fit to fight. According to Spiegel.da, this was the worst use of poison gas since the First World War. At first, the gas smelled like garbage but then the smell became sweet and pleasant like an apple. Thus, the majority of children were lured to smell it more strongly, only to suffer a barbaric death. The operation tore families apart. Even today, there are survivors who are still looking for their relatives. 5,000 innocent people were killed directly in the attack, and a total of 50,000 to 100,000 people were killed also because of after-effects such as cancer. The gas came from the West. Also during the Second Gulf War, many Kurds fled from Iraq because the Iraqi dictator wanted to conquer Kuwait because of the oil resources. But he did not succeed. 
and he had to pull out of Kuwait. Saddam's defeat encouraged Shiites and Kurds to lead an insurrection, but it was suppressed very bloody because Saddam's armistice with the Allies meant that he had enough to defeat the insurgents. To protect the insurgents, the UN established a no-fly zone in northern Iraq in April 1991. However, this didn't stop Saddam completely, as the ban only covered planes, so he could use attack helicopters as an alternative. But this zone had a very big advantage for the Kurds, because it was in this area that the autonomous region of Kurdistan was born. That is, its own government, military and parliament were formed. When eight years later, in 1999, Abdullah Öcalan was arrested in Kenya, three years later, Turkey was forced by the European Union to legalize the Kurdish language, and the PKK has also been classified as a terrorist organization by the European Union. Another date that is very important for the Kurds is February 1, 2004 because on this day there were two terrorist attacks in front of the central seats of the two largest parties PUK and KDP. About 100 people were killed. The whole thing happened in Erbil in the first day of Eid al -Adha, which is a Muslim festival where friends and acquaintances gather, which accordingly led to more victims than on a normal day. The organization Al-Qaeda confessed to the assassination. One year after the attacks in Erbil, also called Yakishubat, for the first time in history, a Kurd became president of Iraq. We're talking about Jalal Talabani, the founder of the PUK. But it should be noted that he was not elected in favor of the Kurds, but out of interest of the United States of America. Since 2014, the Kurdish fighters, also called Peshmerga, together with other fighters, as well as with the PKK and the YPG, have been successfully fighting against the terrorist militia IS. They were able to liberate the areas to a large extent, and thus they have fought not only for themselves, but for the whole world. Even today, the Kurds are oppressed by most countries, especially after the independence referendum that took place in northern Iraq on September 25, 2017. Because Turkey, Iran and Iraq won't tolerate that the Kurds in Iraq become independent, because then the Kurds in Turkey and Iran would also want to seek independence. Although the referendum was very clear with about 93% in favor, but because Turkey and Iraq did not agree, they closed the airports of the autonomous region of Kurdistan, which led, among other things, to the withdrawal of the Kurdish regional president, Masoud Barzani, who had conducted the referendum. The Kurds has also lost the disputed region Kirkuk to the Arabs. In 2019, they once again became the plaything of international interests. In connection with the civil war in Syria, they were initially allied with the USA in the fight against the Islamic State. But after the withdrawal of the Americans, they were exposed to attacks from Turkey and thus left on their own. scattered over several countries, over several continents, persecuted, deported, oppressed, even murdered in the 21st century. Nobody knows how long this will continue, but it's certain that it will continue because the hope for an independent Kurdistan is still cherished by all Kurds, which they pass on to their children. And as the Kurds say, hope doesn't die.